Hello, and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench, we have a Q&A from a viewer. I was asked to go into a little bit of detail about how a scope can get blown up. And there's a bunch of videos on this topic about how the barrel on the scope is ground and all this other stuff. But I haven't seen many people go into the difference between DMM measurement and scope measurement. So we're going to get into a little bit about how stuff blows up, how not to blow stuff up, and then also some fundamental differences in the measurements of a scope versus a DMM. And we're going to take a look at that. So if that's interesting, hang around, because that's what we're going to get into. Okay, so scopes and why there is problems. Well, if I touch the barrel and I touch the ground pin, on most oscilloscopes, ground pin, and we have a straight through connector. I don't know if you guys can hear the uh, beeper going off, but we have a straight through connector from the BNC into the ground pin. So ground is carried through the scope from the electrical panel all the way through to the barrel of the BNC. Now the problem is this continues from here up the jacket of the probe all the way to the ground clamp of the probe. So we have ground all the way up to the ground lead. So one of the things is, for scopes, this is not a negative connection point, this is a ground lead. So the scope is single-ended, where the a DMM is differential. So the fundamental different ways in how these scopes uh, measure. There are some scopes that have what's called an isolated input. They are very, very, very far and few between. And uh, if you have one, you know you have one because you went out looking for one. 98 plus percent of these scopes on the market, they're ground referenced, which is really important to not break the pin off. Uh, if you plug this into an isolation transformer, some weird stuff can happen. It'll still work, but you can get hazardous voltages on the case and things like that. Um, and it, it can go a little funny. So it's not advised to plug a scope into an isolation transformer. Um, sometimes we had to do that. If we take a look at the inputs on a DMM, we can see there's two ratings that are important with it being a differential measurement. So we have the low terminal and the high terminal. Notice it's not ground, it's low. And we have... 1,000 volts DC or 750 volts AC between these two terminals. Sometimes meters will get a little different. And I do have some that go up to 1,000. But uh, this Keithley in particular is 1,000 volts DC and 750 AC. The other measure that's really important is this one right here, which is 500 volts peak to ground. So even this meter, this is isolated from ground but it only has about 500 volts of isolation before it'll, before it's outside the ratings. The meter terminals are rather robust. Don't chance it. This is also one of the important reasons where if you're using a high voltage probe, the ground lead must be hooked up first for the voltage divider to work. If you just touch this and then hook the ground lead up, one, not a very safe thing to do, but two, you have no voltage divider effect. And so you just put, even though it's current limited by the divider resistors, you just put the, the full voltage into the input of the piece of test equipment and it can get damaged, especially when looking at like 4,000 volt supplies and things like that. So we have a meter that can be lifted above ground, 500 volts depending on what it is, and then we have a input that is another 750 or 1,000 volts above that. So we can actually go 1,500 volts above ground in the right conditions and not have a problem on the input of this meter. The scope's ground referenced. This doesn't exist, so the what a lot of people think is the low terminal, the ground lead, is actually ground. There's no float here, and because it's a low impedance ground connection, if you hook something up that's ground referenced to, say, a power supply where you hook it into a negative supply, you'll actually short the supply out to ground, and that's what causes the damage, is it ha there's a path it can go, and it will. So we have, on a DMM, we actually have differential measurement. So when the DMM is measuring a voltage, it's measuring it between these two terminals and really doesn't care about anything else as long as this is within range. 
it'll tell you. I could take a 50 volt power connector, measure a 120 volt power connector, as long as both of them total don't equal outside the range of the meter. Let's see, negative 50 and 120. It'll tell me there's 170 volts between those two terminals, which there are if the supplies are referenced to each other. So it's very versatile, and you can poke around in a circuit a lot more freely with a scope than you can, or with a meter than you can with a scope. Now, there's a couple of ways to get around that a little bit, and we'll take a look at some of those now. Okay, here's the 7A26 on my... 7603, and we'll notice there's a couple of, well, there's two connectors, which is important, and then there's a invert polarity, and there's an add function over here on the vertical plug-in. So there is a way, if you don't have a differential scope and you absolutely must take a differential measurement, ground clips go to a ground reference in the circuit, you can go to add, invert, and then you have the two channels set up. And essentially, you have a rudimentary differential input. We still have the ground ring, but we have what would be a high impedance that we can hook up to negative that will add, or whatever we need to hook it up to, low, high, we'll say. And we're going to add it to whatever's on channel 1. So if this is below ground, it'll subtract. If it's above ground, it'll add. And it'll show us some differential input, or it'll show us a differential signal on the front of the scope. We have ground reference, but we have low and high. There is a better way to do that where they made dedicated sources for it. Taking a look at the front end of my DSA 602, we actually see we have an 11A33, which is actually a differential comparator. So we have a true negative and positive input. They made a couple of these for the 7000 series. We'll take a look at those here in a second. But it gives us one meg or one gig ohm on the differential comparator, and it's a true differential input. We still have ground, but we do have now a negative signal and a positive signal, and it is designed to operate and function in that capacity. These types of measurements are also so important that we get differential plug-ins in the 500 series and the 7000 series. In the 7000 series, we get the 7A22 and the 7A13. The 7A22 is primarily differential, the 7A13 actually has an offset. This type W plug-in has the same offset. So let's say I need to measure the ripple on a power supply rail. I can hook the power supply rail up to the input, grounding the barrel, not on the negative, but on true ground. And then I can actually put an offset voltage in here. And then that'll it'll bring the noise up to where the scope can read it and not get swamped out by the DC bias of the power supply. So you can hit DC negative input. Let's say it's a 5 volt supply. Dial this up to 5 volts. Now I've offset the supply rail 5 volts. I'm still taking DC measurement. I don't need that capacitor on the input of the signal anymore. But I can read the ripple on a 5 volt rail without having to go into AC mode and putting the front end capacitor in place. Same thing over here. We have a uh, 1.1 and a wheel and then an 11-volt and a wheel. Um, I think this one goes up to about a 22-volt offset. This one goes to a 15-volt offset, plus or minus. And the 7A22 doesn't offset at all. It's just differential. You can use it in single-ended mode. If we would put this into DC mode, we could put positive or negative into DC mode, ground the second terminal. Now it's running like a single-ended scope probe per normal. One of the reasons to use these differential comparators is we get far more common mode rejection out of the out of the signals. This I believe the 7A22 has something like a 20,000 CMMR. Um, I have to look up the 7A13, but you can get a lot of rejection of common mode signals on a differential comparator that you can't necessarily get it on a single ended input because there's nothing to compare it to. The 7A13 has a 10,000, greater than 10,000 CMMR, and it is actually 100 megahertz of bandwidth, but it's not as sensitive as the 7A22. The 7A22 is only one megahertz, but it has a 10 microvolt range. 
down here at the very, very bottom. So these things can get incredibly sensitive. And just because of amplifier noise, yes, the 7A13 goes down to one millivolt. So you get two more decimal places of, of uh, range on the 7A22, but you do have to sacrifice some bandwidth. So we have fast down to one millivolt, which is still better than a lot of the 7A26s, because the 7A26s, they go down to five millivolts. So we get one millivolts at 100 megahertz and 10 microvolts at one megahertz. So what happens when we have the good old Rigel scope that uh, doesn't have differential inputs and we need to make a differential measurement, can't take plug-ins or any of that good stuff, and we want to do true differential and not invert one channel and add them together. We get one of these. They have a true differential scope probe. This is the new series of the Mixig. Price was right. And I've used it in a couple of videos where I, I needed true differential input. And it worked well. Uh, needed a floating power supply and to do some op-amp circuits, things like that that didn't necessarily have a ground. Didn't have a place where I could safely hook the ground probe to. So we ended up, I just ended up using the differential probe and it worked rather well. This is the Mixig DP1007. It says high voltage, but it goes to 700 volts, which is okay. I mean, my meter's got bigger input than that. The um, It does do DC to 100 megahertz. Some of the really, really high voltage probes, uh, they struggle on bandwidth sometimes just because of velocity factor. I mean, it, if you're trying to get a... 100 megahertz signal to move kilovolts at a time, it's moving. So you run into physics challenges, things like that. The other thing is these need a external power brick. The Rigel has a convenient USB plug that powers the active circuitry. These are not passive probes. They are active probes. And... Um, they will work on an older scope. However, the math gets a little strange because your 1x on the scope input, but your 20x on the differential probe. So the math gets a little weird. I like being able to set the Rigel to 20 or 200x, and uh, just it tells me the right numbers. And I don't get lost in the math because I find I do that quite often because I forget how I have the scope set up and then all of a sudden I think I'm measuring 10 volts and I'm measuring 100 volts and it's off the scale and it, it gets kind of wild sometimes. So if you need true differential measurement, which can also help in op-amp circuits because op-amp circuits, depending on how they're set up, there may not be a ground. And so having a differential probe can make some debugging easier. Since we are talking about outputs and things like that. This is my Keithley battery simulator power supply and you can see we have a plus minus and a ground. So this is an isolated ground and in and in a lot of cases, check it first, uh, we can check mine here real quick with a resistance measurement between ground and open or I should say ground and low it's completely open. There's no current path between those overflow. So the Keithley cannot even measure the resistance between these. So there's no connection between those two ports. So with that being a isolated output, which is also one of the reasons why, and a lot of power supplies actually are isolated output. You just want to be sure before you hook it up. Uh, we'll swing over to my, we'll swing over to some of my, um, Power design stuff. So some of the power design stuff, we can see DC minus DC plus ground, DC plus DC minus ground, low, high ground, low, high ground, bunch of low and highs on this one, and then ground all the way down here at the bottom. A lot of the supplies aren't ground referenced, and that's by design. That helps with um, debugging and things like that because it makes things safer to hook up but double check the connections before you make them. We talked a lot about scopes, things like that. However, this problem also extends to function generators, 
and anything with a BNC output on it. You always want to check and see if this BNC output is hooked up to ground in any way before you start connecting things to circuit. Um, another place where you'll find this same problem is signal generators. In signal generators, it's actually such a problem. My SD, my SG505s have a grounded or floating. I can set the barrel for float or ground depending on what I need with an additional ground lug here. So this is something to be aware of with a lot of test equipment, not just scopes. Thanks for stopping by the lab and taking a look at the presentation on differential and single-ended measurement and how not to blow up test gear. If you found this helpful, hit the subscribe button, like button, do all the YouTube things, and hang around. If you'd like to check on some additional content, check out the Patreon page. Patreons are running a little bit ahead from YouTube. Everything will ultimately end up on YouTube. There's nothing behind the paywall, but their support to the channel helps me keep the lights on here, and I am eternally grateful. Their support has helped more than anybody knows. With that, as always, more's on the way, and I will see everybody in the next video.